Hey guys, this is going to be a tutorial on how to get Duck Station set up to speedrun Final Fantasy VII. This is the only emulator allowed for submissions in the digital category of speedruns.com, but it is also one of the best emulators to use overall, especially for its input latency. So this will be useful also for practice purposes. I will cover what you'll need to get everything up and running, including recommended settings and also settings I prefer. Thanks to Ace Zephyrus, I will also be covering how to get Cheat Engine and Big Shoes to work with this emulator, which will be also be useful for practice purposes. It will take a little more work than other emulators, but it is worth it. I will link everything you need in the description below, but unfortunately I cannot link the BIOS and game files due to copyright laws, but it should be easy to find with a little bit of googling and dumping your own ROM. So first things first, in the Duck Station page, just head over to the right and click on the latest development build and down this one just the duck station windows x64 release that's the only one you need you're going to want to launch this exe over here the one that does not say no gui general settings i like to enable pause on start because on a digital category you have to start the timer as soon as you start your game right after the ps1 loads this just makes it easier to start your timer at the exact time your game starts. This is enabled by default save state on exit. I find this option pretty annoying because it automatically loads that save state it creates on exit every time you start your game. It might be useful useful in a casual playthrough but for speed running purposes, I don't think so. Definitely disable this automatic loading cheats. Now this is also enabled by default. I don't see a reason why you should enable it. If it works, don't fix it. BIOS time. If BIOS is required for all PlayStation 1 emulators to function. As previously stated, I cannot link you to BIOS file directly, but you can find it pretty easily from searching the file name. Now, you can leave these settings on default auto detect. Now click on open in explorer, and it should bring you the directory where your BIOS file needs to go. The file you'll want is this file, scph1001.bin. There are other BIOS files that will work, but for our intent and purposes, this will be fine. Now close that. Now you'll also want to enable fast boot. This setting lets you skip the PS1 boot logo animation whenever you, you reset the game. For me, this setting sometimes doesn't work, but I don't know why. Resetting your emulator should fix it though. Console settings. Most of the settings here should be left on default. The only settings we'll change here is read speed up and seek speed up. This should increase our loading times while still having the game run stable. Change read speed up to two times quad speed and seek speed up to infinite instantaneous. These two options are the only legal options allowed for submission. Emulation settings. Emulation speed needs to be left 100%. If you find your speed up is too fast for practice purposes, you can turn these two settings down to something that's comfortable for you. These settings will turn down the fast forward speed. Rewind can be useful for practice purposes. It will let you rewind your game for a certain amount of time that is set. These settings can be a little finicky so you'll have to try to use it yourself. Run ahead is supposed to help with input latency but duck station latency is already so good I have not noticed any difference changing this setting. And it also needs a high system requirement, so I suggest just leaving this disabled. Game list settings. These settings are for convenience purposes only. Press the add button over here and select the directory where your ROM files are. Now press yes so it can search subdirectories. Now your games should show in the back over here. Since we're here, I'm going to show you how to create a playlist file. This will allow you to change disk with a single hotkey instead of going through the menu slowly. In your folder where your ROM files are, click on view and enable file extensions if it's not already on. Now create a text file and name it whatever you want. I'll just name it FF7. Open it up. Now enter the file name of the .q file exactly as shown so you can just copy and paste and put these in order so Final Fantasy Disk 1, Disk 2, and Disk 3. Now rename this file, rename the file extension, remove the txt and change it to 
m3eu I will ask you if you really want to change it just apply now just press rescan and it should show up over here once you have done so you'll always want to load this file up when you're speed running so you get the benefit of just using a hotkey or changing this hotkey settings these settings are going to be mostly personal preference but I'll still go over them quickly so between fast forward and turbo I don't really notice any difference this is just increasing the game speed so you can just set these whatever you like so toggle fast forward so you don't have to hold on to the button and it'll just continue fast forwarding of course don't enable these for um, for speed running purposes system you'll want to enter a hotkey for change disk this is what the m3u playlist file is used for graphics you just leave it you won't usually change graphics with hotkeys save states these are going to be user preference also usually emulators use the function keys as the save states but up to you when you're making save states for your practices you're not gonna want to rely on these slots because there's only a limited amount of them about I think 20 total which is not enough at all for Final Fantasy 7 instead you can use these for just quick and low saves instead what you want to do is go to file save state and save to file from here you want to name them maybe with a number at first then whatever it is so you can have them in order so reactor one will be my first save you know number two guards get maybe you'll, <laughs> you'll probably want something in between but just have them in order so they're easier to find controller settings this is going to be personal preference again you can set multiple bindings to one key so you can have both a keyboard and a controller mapped at the same time if you want to use auto fire for your speed run you can set them here auto fire meaning turbo so for Final Fantasy 7 you'll usually want circle as turbo so you could just hold it to mash through dialogue set your key and leave it at two frames I believe there are no settings to enable toggling this on and off so if you want that option you go, you're going to have to rely on a third-party application memory card type for memory cards I just like to set this to share it between all games so for multiple disc games this is less confusing mm, that's all you really need to change here display settings for the renderer you could leave this on default but if you're having performance issues you could try something like Vulkan it'll probably help you but just don't use software everything else here you could probably leave on default if you if you don't like your full screen resolution you could change it over here aspect ratio you should leave this on auto if you stretch your game then you're a monster and you should be ashamed of yourself cropping just changes the border cropping over here use whatever you like down sampling doesn't really change much so you can leave this disabled and over here linear upscaling is on by default do you see how blurry the game is right now you should disable it see what happens see how clearer that is on off it's just night and day for on-screen display none of these are required but it's nice to have for uh, for verification reasons like show game frame rate display FPS emulation speed control input these things are just nice to have you don't really need it but no why not okay for enhancement settings you'll want to check this one to see what's slithering there's like a dotted filter on top of everything right now once you enable this it'll clean up the image a lot internal resolution you can keep this at 1x if you like the crispy ps1 pixels but i like to upscale so i upscaled five times before this it looks a lot cleaner this way but right now you'll see some like animation glitches over here where it looks a little bit weird to fix this turn on geometry correction with all these settings with texture correction depth buffer and color correction this doesn't really seem to do much 
so there's a there's a big difference turning it off and on see off come on for post processing settings it's like adding a filter on top of everything so this is just letting you have more fun with the image quality so with internal resolution at five times what i like to do is add noise filter on top of it so it doesn't look too clean so enable post processing to find the noise you can just add this the calibrator right here then you could just adjust it from here right now it looks a little bit dark so turn this down max the white brightness now maybe it's a little too colorful turn the tone needs down a little bit then you can also do wacky things like this where it's like has kind of like a cell shading effect but you, you'll really have to play around with this to see what you like some of these don't work really well especially with the menu texts you know but it's just something fun for audio you can leave these on default buffer size you can re try to reduce this to reduce the audio latency if you're having any but in my experience leaving this default it usually works the best I have the game muted right now but you can also change the fast forward volume so when you're speeding up the game the audio can be muted or lowered so it doesn't sound like jumbo garbage now to get Chi Engine and Big Shoes working there are a lot of benefits to getting them both to work with your emulator for practice purposes things like having a visible chart to show where your next encounter is or your to check if your movement is not precise or not change your in-game time from nips things like that needless to say do not have these things open while you're actually speed running that would be called cheating now in your settings go to advanced settings and check this box log to system console now just leave that extra window that open on close this close the settings launch your game now you're the new in your new window you want to look for RAM is blah 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 at bytes blah blah blah. I'll show you one second. Over here, RAM is blah 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 at blah blah blah. Double click the last number and right click it and it'll auto copy. Now, what you'll want to do is this open cheat engine. Now, click on the top left to open the process and you'll want the process of duck station that ends with tcg.exe press open now check this box for hex paste that value you just copied and change the value type to 8 bytes now press first scan you might have multiple addresses you're just gonna have to try multiple of them double click it to just add it to the list now you could double click the address copy the last number over here Now we can test if this works on Big Shoes or not. Now you want to open BigShoes.exe. Go to Connect, Connect to Emulator, DuckStation for Emulator name, Emulator Process ID should be automatic. Then leave this on Manual. Now put the address there. You just copy, it, press Connect. Now to test if it's working, just go to Window, open the Step Graph. Now you'll actually have to load into the game for it to work. Bam. Now to confirm it's working, you see whenever I move it moves along. And when I hit that purple line over here, I'm gonna hit an encounter. Bam. Right there. Okay, so we confirmed that's working right now. We'll just close this for now. Now we also have this very, very useful memory chart for all like a lot of memory values, things like your level, your stats, your step ID, even your IGT, you just search IGT over here. Now what we can do with that is let's go back to Chi Engine. Let's go over here and copy that value, the whole value, which is basically just this whole thing. Just copy that whole value and click add address manually. Add an open bracket, add the value, and close that bracket. Now add additional sign and copy the value shown over here. 
go back to G engine, paste it. <coughs> Let's just give it a description IGT. Now check the bytes over here, make sure it matches. Four bytes, four bytes, okay. Now you can see it's ticking up just like my in-game time would. Right here. And what you can do with this is double click the value. You change it to whatever you want. Just click change. Bam. Now it's changing. You can also freeze it. Just like that. Now I don't believe this value would change unless you update your emulator. So, but I'm not too sure because I'm not really a Chi Engine Pro. But if you have any issues, you just hop on to the FF7 Speedrun Discord. You can find that at the speedrun.com FF7 link. It'll be, just click on the Discord symbol and you'll find us there if you have any questions.